Hey everyone, it's Sarah and today I am finally here to do my most recent dupes video. So I've been working on this for a long time. It's hard to come up with or it's not hard, it's just it takes time to um, gather up dupes and I wanted to do things that I had in my collection. So um, yeah, I've got a ton here. Most of these are pretty darn like close. I would say some of them are like smell alikes. You'll definitely have get the same have the same experience um, and maybe aren't as close as others, but we'll definitely talk about all that as we go through these. So I'm going to be quiet and I'm gonna jump right in. So this first one that I'm gonna talk about is one that I actually discovered on my own. Um, and that is a dupe for Misty or Absolutely Blooming. So I had tried Absolutely Blooming years and years ago. I went through samples some years ago and I liked it. I didn't love it enough to ever buy a full bottle of it. Um, but now that these, a lot of these Mistures are being discontinued, I feel like I need, um, I've been feeling like I need to get some more of them in my life before they're gone. Um, but anyways, so I had picked up a bottle of this not too long after I picked this up. I actually got a sample of this fragrance here from a fragrance or with a fragrance net order. This is a fragrance called Ajmal Shine. And it's funny when I sprayed this, I think it was even in my um, my like haul first impressions video. When I sprayed this, I immediately felt like it smelled like something. And I had I had just gotten my absolutely blooming in the mail like a couple days prior. So I immediately knew that it was that it was reminding me of absolutely blooming. So this one, it's not like an exact dupe. I actually think I prefer shine over absolutely blooming um, absolutely blooming I like it it's it's nice but yeah it's so like when you very very first spray it you get some kind of like a synthetic wood note and it doesn't it takes a minute for it to start smelling like absolutely blooming but it literally only takes like 10 seconds before it really does start to smell like it so this is the Ajmal and this is the Absolutely Blooming. And they're so, so similar. So the Ajmal is a little, I would say a touch sweeter. It's a touch sweeter and I think the Absolutely Blooming is just a touch more floral. But as they dry down, they start smelling, I mean almost. You can smell some kind of slight nuanced differences. But like you're definitely going to have the same experience. They're definitely both like sweet florals. The Ajmal is a little bit more, is a little bit brighter. And as it dries down, it brightens up a little bit more than, but Absolutely Blooming does too. Absolutely Blooming starts really sweetening up as it dries down. As, and the Ajmal actually goes a little bit opposite. So it's pretty sweet when you first spray it, but as it dries down, the sweetness kind of starts to mellow out a little bit. There are definitely some differences, but I feel like if you're one of those people that you want a fragrance that smells like absolutely blooming, but you just don't want to have to, at this point, track down a discontinued bottle, I feel like Ajmal Shine is, again, not, an, not a perfect spot on dupe, but close enough that you'll definitely have the same kind of experience. They're both kind of um, sweet florals. So both of them have like fruits and berries on the top. Um, Miss Dior has a little bit more and has a few more notes than the Ashmal Shine, but both of them have pomegranate in the top. Um, I think Ashmal has strawberry and I think it's just strawberry and pomegranate in the Ajmal. Miss Dior has blackcurrant as well as raspberry in the top. Even though they aren't the exact same notes, they kind of translate the same. So Ajmal has peony and lily of the valley and then Miss Dior has may rose and peony. So they're super, super similar. They're, they're composed very similarly. Miss Dior has white musk in the base and Ajmal, it just says like powdery notes and woody notes. But I can tell you they're both, they've both dried down completely at this point and 
I love them both, but I like the Ajmal better in the dry down. There's just something about it that it's smoother and it's just nicer overall than the Absolutely Blooming. The Absolutely Blooming, also, it almost has something kind of screechy smelling in the base definitely in comparison to the Ashmal. So I actually prefer Shine over Monsieur Absolutely Blooming, but they are very, very similar. And yeah, I think anybody looking for a less expensive alternative would be perfectly happy with Shine. So that is the first one. Um, okay, this second one, this is one, this is one that I discovered like a long time ago, probably, I don't know. I think I discovered this one last summer. Well, really I discovered it when I picked this fragrance up because I knew it smelled like something and um, yeah, it only took me a second going through my collection to figure out what it was reminding me of. But the fragrance I'm talking about is Zara Apple Juice. So Zara Apple Juice is a pretty darn good dupe for uh, of Chanel Chance Au Fraiche. Um, these are incredibly similar fragrances and Yeah, they're so, so similar. And Chance Au Fraiche doesn't last on me at all. There's definitely like a slight difference. Um, the Zara one is less citrusy smelling than Au Fraiche. Au Fraiche is very, very heavy on the citruses. The Zara one is, it's, it's a little bit softer smelling, less citric. Apple juice, is pretty linear. So it smells like what it's gonna smell like pretty much from the time you spray it on until the deep dry down. Whereas the Chanel, you get a ton of the citrus in the top and then it isn't until the deep dry down of Eau Fraiche that it starts to smell like apple juice. The Chanel stays very, very citric throughout. And a lot of the citruses kind of dissipate with apple juice. And they do definitely have differences. They don't, apple juice isn't like a dead-on dupe for Eau Fraiche, but you're definitely going to have the same experience. They're composed very, again, in a very similar way. They've got citruses in the top, different citruses, mind you. They've got flowers in the middle, again, different flowers, and they've got like musk and woods in the base. So the Chanel Eau, uh, Chance Eau Fraiche is much brighter and it, this one takes you on a journey for sure. Like it smells different from the time you spray it on to the time it dries down. You're, it's gonna smell a little bit different. Whereas with apple juice, it's just you're, you're gonna get a big blast of citrus at the beginning, but then it kind of softens up and dries down very quickly and it's pretty linear. But I think that they're definitely I don't know. I would maybe I wouldn't call this one a dupe. I would call it a smell alike. They're very similar fragrances. They're definitely in the same kind of category. Um, yeah, they're super fresh. But I will tell you, once Eau Fraiche really, really dries down, gets to the deep dry down, it softens up, and a lot of that citrus goes. A lot of those citruses go away, and that's when it really starts to smell like apple juice. So you definitely do have to wait. You probably are gonna have to wait a good, I don't know, 30 or 45 minutes for Eau Fraiche to really start resembling apple juice. And with apple juice, you're gonna get directly to that dry down. You're gonna get directly to the Eau Fraiche dry down within, I would say, two minutes. But yeah, very, very similar, very, um, I definitely think it's worth it. If you love Chanel Chance Au Fraiche, but you don't want to pay $100 plus for a bottle of perfume, definitely check out Zara Apple Juice. This is one that they've had in their, in their line for a really long time at this point. Um, I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon, and you can pick this one ounce bottle up for $10. Um, they have raised the prices by, I think, a dollar on the the inexpensive perfumes, but still for, you know, it's still under $11 and you can definitely have the same kind of experience, um, the same kind of fragrance that it's going to cost you a tenth of the Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche. And I've been meaning to do another dupes video for 
like a year and a half now and I'm finally just getting I finally got to a point where I feel like I have enough okay this next one this one was a little bit disappointing for me only because I already had something in my collection that smelled like this and I feel like I don't well you'll see what I'm talking about so the next dupe I have for you is one for the Seven Virtues Lotus Pear. And the dupe that I have for you is this one here. This is just Tommy Bahama for her. Um, so I picked this up during the Sephora VIB sale. I was super excited because I love, I love pear in fragrance. And I know Lotus is kind of like a green leaning type floral. It's more of a like a watery kind of smelling floral. So I was really, really excited to get this and to get it, I mean, really. And I was expecting, I think I was expecting more of like a fresh green pear mixed with what I thought was going to be kind of a green, a more green leaning lotus. I was just expecting something much more fresh than what this is. and. When it dried down on my skin, I was like, I this smells exactly like something that I've already that I've already got. And it was this. This is a dupe for Juicy Couture Viva La Juicy, the intense formulation. Um, but it smells just like Juicy Couture. So yeah, this is definitely a dupe for the intense version. So it's a little bit more rich smelling than even the original Viva La Juicy. And I would say this is more of a dupe of the original Viva La Juicy, for sure, because Viva La Juicy came out how many years ago? Like so long ago. And this just came out. So this is definitely the one duping, but they're so, so darn similar. I mean, yeah, it, like if you've been interested in Lotus Pear from the Seven Virtues, just skip it, just skip it. I would just pick up a bottle of this because this is even way, way less expensive than Juicy. And they are so, so similar. So similar. I will say that the Seven Virtues is a little bit more, a little bit more fresh smelling. And it is even a little bit more fresh smelling than the original Juicy, but it smells just like it. It even smells, and like I said, this is a dupe of the Juicy Couture Viva La Juicy Intense. So this is just more intense. It's creamier, it's richer, it's just, it's more intense, but it smells. Yeah, and even on paper, this one is actually starting, as the Seven Virtues dries down, it sweetens up so much that it starts get, it's, I mean, it smells just like Viva La Juicy. It gets so incredibly sweet. Whereas the Tommy Bahama one is actually lightening up a little bit. It's not getting, it's not getting richer smelling. It's actually getting a little bit lighter smelling. And the Seven Virtues is getting very, sweet. This is one that is more than a smell alike. This is like a dupe. They're almost indistinguishable, really. Yeah, these are almost indistinguishable. They smell so much alike. So if you are somebody out there that has been curious about Lotus Pear, just save your money and get the Tommy Bahama. You're going to have the exact same experience. All the freshness from the pear is like out the window in the dry down in this one because it just keeps getting sweeter and sweeter. It smells like Viva La Juicy. So yeah, that's a great, I feel like that's a great dupe um, because the Seven Virtues is not an overly expensive house to begin with. I think you can get a full bottle of, of a Seven Virtues fragrance for I think 70 or $75. Um, so it's not overly expensive, but you can most certainly pick up the Tommy Bahama for like in the $20 range. So anyways, that's a really good actual dupe here. Um, yeah, I really enjoy that one. Don't get me wrong, I love them both, but I was just expecting something completely different out of the Seven Virtues. And I got something that smells exactly like something else I, al I already had in my collection. 
Okay, this perfume, um, I knew that I had to get this for this video. I needed to test it for myself. This next combination or these next couple of fragrances we're going to be talking about are definitely, it's definitely a wintertime fragrance, but I had to get this because I had had so many people tell me that it smells just like by the fireplace. So the fragrances we are going to be talking about is Replica by the fireplace and Latafa Amir Al Oud. Um, sorry, this is Lemir, Amir Al Oud Intense, and these are so, so similar. Um, there are definitely some differences with these, but these would be somewhere in between a dupe and a smell alike. I feel like, I feel like they're more similar than just a smell alike, but they're, it's not quite a dupe. So we've got By the Fireplace here and Amir Al Oud here. They're so, so similar. So By the Fireplace is a little bit more woody smelling. This also has a chestnut note in it and the chestnut note in By the Fireplace is very, very prominent and it's one of my favorite things about By the Fireplace. That's what gets me with this fragrance is the chestnut note. And you definitely don't get that with Amir Al Oud, but you get a ton of sweetness with the Amir Al Oud. And the woodiness in the Amir Al Oud is Oud, whereas it's not. Um, it's not Oud in By the Fireplace. So the woodiness is definitely different. You also get a touch of smokiness with By the Fireplace and you will get a touch of smokiness with Amir Al Oud, but it's not going to be until further in the dry down. But yeah, Amir Al Oud is definitely, I would say the biggest difference is Amir Al Oud is sweeter. But they're so, so similar. Like I would definitely say they're somewhere in between a smell alike and a dupe. It's not quite a dupe because they're not, they don't smell, you know, exactly the same, but they're more than a smell alike. They're, it's so good. It's such a good alternative. I feel like, I think I picked this up for, I think you can pick this up on Triple Traders for $22, I think $24. It's a huge bottle. It's super heavy and nice and Replica by the Fireplace, I think you can get one ounce bottles now for $100 or you can get this one which is the, um, or you can get the 3.4 ounce bottle for I think it's $120 or $140. So I mean for again a tenth of the price you can get, you can just get the Amir Al Oud and you'll definitely have the same kind of experience. Yeah. And especially if you like by the fireplace, but you find yourself adding vanilla to it or something to sweeten it up a little bit, I think you would really love Amir Al Oud Intense because it's already got a ton of vanilla in it. Um, so there are definitely some di some differences, but you'll definitely have the same kind of experience there. It's just it's a they're really good alternatives. So, anyways, um, yeah, there's that one. This next one is I would say really, really spot on. This is one I would definitely call a dupe. So the fragrances we are going to be talking about is Kayali Invite Only Amber 23 and Hermes Ombre Nargile. So these are both really, really beautiful. Kind of, um, I, they smell, they're ambers, but they, something about them smells like apple pie. Um, they're beautiful. I would also say that this, that the Kayali smells like, um, smells like Ombre d'Alexandri from Boucheron. Okay, so this is the Kayali and this is the Hermes. And right off the bat, I would say the Hermes smells more like that kind of apple pie. Yeah, it definitely, the something about the Ombre Nargile smells 
like exactly like apple pie. It smells like apple and cinnamon and sugar, like brown sugar. I don't know. It's ombre, Ar ombre nargile has always reminded me of like warm apple pie. So the Kayali is very, very similar. I would say if you're looking for a true dupe of Ombre Nargule, pick up the Ombre d'Alexandrie from Boucheron. Um, if you can still find it, it's, it's actually gotten, I think it's gotten kind of difficult to find and it's pretty expensive. But if you're looking for like a pretty spot on dupe for it, I would pick that one up. But if you can't find either of them, or you just don't want to pay that kind of money, you could definitely pick up the K Alley and have the exact same experience. So the K Alley, it again, it smells, it smells like apple pie, like an apple pie amber. But the the K Alley has a softness to it. I will tell you, the K Alley lasts way longer too. It performs so much better than Ombre Narcule. I think the thing that is the most different between the two is the K Alley has a little bit of cherry in it and you can detect that cherry. I don't get any kind of cherry with the uh, Hermes, but when it really gets down to like the brass tacks, they have a ton of notes in common and that's why they smell so similar. They have um, tobacco and lots of resins, benzoin and labdanum and spices. Again, they've both got cinnamon and honey and they're, they're so, so similar. They've got some flowers in the middle. Um, I'm pretty sure, Kayali, I'm pretty sure has a little bit of rose in it. Ombre Nargule is really hard to find the notes on this one. Like the, well, it's not really hard. You can find them on the Hermes website, but, but they're so, so similar because they share so many of the same notes. And in the deep dry down of both, they smell I don't want to say identical. I don't want anybody to like run out and buy it thinking it's going to be identical to Ombre, Nar Ombre Nargule, but incredibly, incredibly similar because at the end of the day, they dry down with the same kinds of notes. You, s you can definitely still smell the cinnamon and the honey and then the resins in the base. They're very, very similar. Um, the K Alley is a little bit different in the top because you get that, that sour cherry note in the top and you don't get that with the Ombre Nargule, but as soon as they both dry down, they are, I mean, they're so similar. You're going to have the exact same experience and you can get these little, like if you just didn't want to splurge on, on a full bottle of any of them, you can get these little K Alley bottles for like 20 or $25. Um, it's not the best deal in the world because I think a full bottle of the amber is only, I don't know, it's like around $100, I think. And this little one, which is only, I think, 10 mil. This one, I think it's either 10 or 15 mil for $25 is really expensive and you definitely get much more value when you just purchase the full bottle. But either way, a, a full bottle of the K Alley is gonna be way cheaper than the Ombre Nargule or the Boucheron Ombre d'Alexandrie and you're gonna have the exact same experience. So anyways, yeah, that's a really, I felt like that one was a really, really good dupe. Okay, this next one is a more recent one that I found. This is one of the fragrances that I picked up from Triple Traders for the, in the $6 range. Um, this one is called Oud 24 Hours, and this is from a, this is from a house called Ard Al Zafaran. And as soon as I sprayed this, I, it's, it reminded me immediately of Black Orchid. Like I smell, I mean, I knew it was Black Orchid immediately. Um, I'm going to try, I only have a little mini of Black Orchid, and I'm going to try to, I'm going to dab some on, um, I don't want to get it on me though, because I don't love Black Orchid, and I don't want to smell like Black Orchid, but if it happens, it happens. I'm just going to try and dab some on the paper so I can compare them. I will tell you, I love Tom Ford minis. They're great for being like dabber bottles. They make some of the best because they pick up a lot of 
perfume in the little lid and it actually disperses on really, really nicely. Oh my gosh, they're so, they're so similar. I mean, the this one is a dead on dupe. I mean, dead on. Like the Tom Ford, you can tell the quality is there. The Tom Ford smells more expensive. Um, the Oud 24 Hours definitely smells a little bit more watery. It doesn't quite have the depth that Black Orchid has. And Black Orchid has some really deep spices or resins in the base. And you just, you don't get that depth with the Oud 24 Hours. But there, it's still a dead on. It, as far as the smell goes, it is a dead on dupe for it. In the same, well, no, I think that, um, I think that Club de Nuit Intense from Armoth, like, is a dead on dupe for Noir de Noir in every sense. Like, in the depth, in the quality, like, in every sense. This is, it smells exactly like it, but you can just tell a difference in the quality. The Oud 24 Hours is like, like I said, it's a more watery version, and you just don't get the quality or the depth. But they smell almost exactly the same. I will say the Tom Ford, you're going to go on a journey with it. It's, it does dry down to smell differently than it did when you first put it on, for sure. And you don't get that with the Oud Al Zafran, or sorry, with the Oud 24 Hours. It's very linear. It smells pretty identical to what it smelled like when you first put it on in the deep dry down. This one maintains a lot of its sweetness, whereas the Tom Ford loses a lot of its sweetness and a lot of the spice comes out. Now, this is on paper though, and you really, it would, it's really, I think, gonna depend on skin chemistry with really all of these. All perfumes perform completely different on every single one of us, depending on how our skin is, what kind of notes our skin pulls, and things like that. So, yeah, so I can only tell you by testing on paper. I have tested all of these on my skin as well, and yeah, you're, there are definitely some differences in really how your body works with them. But for the most part, this is a pretty dead on dupe. And actually, now that the Oud 24 Hours is really drying down, it's starting, it's starting to deepen up and lose a lot of that sweetness too. So now it really is smelling very, very similar to the Black Orchid. I did test this on my skin though. The Oud Al Zafran, it, um, it definitely wore off before Black Orchid did. And I just, and I, like I said before, it's just, it's very linear in comparison to Black Orchid. But they're so, so similar. I mean, I feel like if you're a Black Orchid lover, and even if you have a bottle of Black Orchid, um, this is a great one to have because you can use it to layer with, or if you just don't feel like getting into your expensive Black Orchid, you wanna make this last longer, you can definitely pick this up for $6. You're obviously not gonna get the quality and the depth and the richness that you get in Black Orchid, but it's you're gonna smell like Black Orchid either way. So anyways, yeah, that one is called Oud 24 Hours. If you don't mind wearing inexpensive fragrances, you're a Black Orchid lover, I think you would really like this one. So anyways, yep, yeah, there's that one. It's funny because I'm not a Black Orchid lover, but as soon as I smelled that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's Tom Ford Black Orchid. It smells exactly like it. Okay, this next one, I have a sample of the dupe for this, but I, I did not want to dig through my big bags of samples just to find the carded sample to show you. Um, but this is a fragrance called Sunrise and Kadek. I have talked about this fragrance endlessly on this channel, um, but I still, I wanna keep getting the word out there for oh, those of you that love Hermes Eau de Marveille. Um, this is such a good alternative to it. Um, I have tested them side by side. I actually prefer Sunrise and Kadek over Eau de Marveille. Number one, it lasts longer. And number two, there's something a little bit smoother about 
Sunrise and Kadek. But for the most part, they smell like, I don't want to say identical, but very, very close. This smells incredibly close to Eau de Marvais. And again, it really is only in the deep dry down that they start to smell a little bit different. But yeah, there it's so, so similar. It's crazy. So they're basically just like citrusy, light ambers. Um, it's funny, anytime you hear people talk about or read reviews about Eau de Marvais, um, people talk about it reminds them of Christmas time. It smells like spiced oranges. And it really does. It smells like a very light, kind of spiced orange amber fragrance. And yeah, very, very similar. So I'll pop a picture up of Eau de Marvais. Um, I feel like anybody that loves Eau de Marvais would love Sunrise and Kadek. It's such an amazing alternative and I couldn't do a dupes video without talking about it. So anyways, that is uh, Salvador Dali Sunrise and Kadek. I feel like Salvador Dali fragrances just in general are so underrated. They're so good. Okay, this next one, this is another um, recent, very recent discovery. It's funny though, as soon as I tested this, I was like, oh my gosh, it's a Scotta Moon Sparkle and it smells exactly like it. So we've got a Scotta Moon Sparkle here and this is the Al Rahab oil called Lovely. Oh my gosh, they're, it, they're so, so similar. So, so similar. I would say the Lovely oil is maybe just a touch sweeter, but when this Lovely oil dries down completely, it smells exactly like a Scotta Moon Sparkle. I mean, they're all, it's almost, you almost can't tell what, which one is the real one and which was which one is the oil. I mean, they're so, so darn similar. Um, Larive makes a dupe of a Scotta Moon Sparkle called Have Fun, but it doesn't last very long. And when you can get this oil, um, this Al Rahab oil for $3, I and it, and it actually lasts longer. Um, the original Moon Sparkle is a freaking beast though, so. Neither have fun or this oil are gonna last as long as the original Moon Sparkle for sure. Um, but it's it's such a good, good dupe. I, I know there are so many of you out there that love Moon Sparkle too um, and are sad about the fact that you can't get it because it's so hard to find now and it's gotten so ridiculously expensive. Um, yeah definitely, definitely go to the Al Rashad website and pick up this lovely oil for $3. It's totally worth it. So anyways, yeah, that's a great dupe for Moon Sparkle. Okay, and this last one is definitely more of a smell alike. Um, I've never found an actual dupe for this perfume. If I ever do, I will definitely let you guys know because this is an amazing fragrance. It is discontinued and it is hard to find. I will tell you there are some people in Canada that are finding it in their shops still. So maybe if you're in Canada, uh, maybe you'll get lucky and we'll run across this in a shop. But here in the United States, it is almost impossible to find. So this is more of a smell alike. It's not an actual dupe. It's the closest fragrance I've ever found to, to this one. So the fragrance we, is, we are going to be talking about is this one here. This is My Insolence, which is a long discontinued, really beautiful, like the best version of Insolence that was ever made. And the smell alike is Gucci Guilty Pour Femme Love Edition. So that's why I love this one so much because it's the only fragrance I've ever smelled that actually reminds me of this, except for French Kiss <laughs> from Guerlain, which... I feel like that's why Guerlain, or that's what Guerlain did. They discontinued this fragrance from their more affordable line and then they just tweaked it a bit and they repackaged it into one of the Arts and Materials bottles. And I feel like they're still selling this but under the fragrance of French Kiss. If French Kiss is even available anymore, I don't know. Um, I've got a four mil sample of French Kiss and I have tested them side by side. They're so similar. They're not dupes. It's definitely not, it's not this fragrance just rebottled and marked up. It is a different fragrance but it smells so, so similar. So my insolence is beautiful. It's lemon and I think raspberry in the top. 
It's got vanilla, tonka, which is one of my most favorite notes on the planet, and patchouli. But the patchouli is very, very, um, you get mostly the vanilla, the powderiness from the almond, and the tonka bean. You get the bright citrus in the top and the raspberry. And that's basically what I get from this fragrance. So Gucci Guilty Love Edition, this has raspberry in the top as well. It's got grapefruit in the middle, so you still get the same kind of feeling of this kind of citrusy raspberry. This has some more florals in it. It's got like narcissus in it. But this one has violet in the middle. The violet in it is what kind of gives it that powderiness that you get from the almond in my insolence. And then again, you get like the musk and patchouli and amber in the base. And they're de it's definitely not a dupe of my insolence. I don't want anybody to think that they're gonna get something that smells exactly like this. They're definitely different. Um, my insolence is a little bit more powdery, a little bit more vanillic. This is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit fresher smelling and a little, a, a little bit more floral smelling but it's the only fragrance that I've ever come across that gives me my insolence vibes besides French Kiss from Guerlain. Um, yeah, it's the closest, I don't wanna say the closest thing because again, this is more of like a smell-alike here, not a dupe. It's just really the only other perfume that, I, that has ever even reminded me of my insolence. Um, there's something so special about my insolence. It's very, um, it's not like the most groundbreaking thing in the world. It doesn't have like, you know, crazy notes or anything, but there's something incredibly unique about it that you just don't, I don't know. And it's just like my favorite kind of perfume. It's kind of like a, it's like a bright, slightly powdery vanilla and tonka. It's like my favorite kind of fragrance. And that's kind of what you get from this as well. It's, it's like a bright, albeit brighter than my insolence, but bright, slightly powdery, kind of vanillic fragrance. I don't know, it's so good. So anyways, yeah, that's a, um, that's definitely a smell alike. You're gonna have the same kind of experience, I would say, with these two fragrances. And yeah, that's been my favorite. Um, like I picked up a travel spray of this fragrance kind of on a whim from fragrance net and that's been like i had to track down a bottle immediately because i just loved it so much it gave me the same kind of vibe that my insolence does and because of that i've just been kind of obsessed with this fragrance recently it's been kind of my favorite find i would say i don't know over the past like my favorite i would say designer find because i think some of my actual favorite finds have been a lot of my oils um like I've been so obsessed with oils lately. But anyways, you guys, yeah, that's all I've got for this video. I'm already working on another dupes video because there were so many more that I wanted to do, but I, there are a lot of fragrances that I have to track down. Probably be a while, but I definitely wanted to get this one out. Um, let me know what your favorite dupe is in the comments down below though. Had you heard of any of these dupes? Do you have any of them? Um, what is your favorite dupe in your collection? I would love to know. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to to subscribe before you leave and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!